First, I want to address, where is it? It's here. I had a little accident where my dog got excited and he bit my face. He's a, he's a puppy, so it's it's normal, but that's why that's what that is. I, I know there would be some comment about it. And now you know. Fake influencers. I know what some of you are thinking. Aren't all influencers fake? I don't mean someone with a very real identity who's using their like real name and likeness and just like performing a life that is maybe not true to how they actually live. You know, like your classic Instagram influencer situation where people make it seem like their life is like far more interesting and you know, perfect than it actually is. I'm talking about people who are literally written by a team of writers. Characters who are pretending to be influencers, but they actually don't exist in real life and they're just made up. Which I understand is a little hypocritical of me because I am just the brainchild of Jake, the State Farm guy. <laughs> it's all been a big ruse. You all fell for it. Sorry. So what's the big deal? Influencers are already promoting lives that they don't live and products that they don't use, um, uh, which actually reminds me of a product I do use, which is today's sponsor, Displate. Question, are you recording a fictional TikTok but don't want to disappoint the team of writers and producers with your bare, bare walls? Yeah. Well, have I got the solution for you. The fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to do this is with today's sponsor, Displate. Displate makes high quality prints on metal. They're mounted on the wall with magnets and they're easy to hang and you can easily change the design without any harm to your walls. Millions of cool designs are available on their website for everything from gaming and sports to movies, including officially licensed designs from Star Wars, Bethesda, Marvel, and more. Show off whatever you're passionate about or just make your wall pretty. Also with every Displate you buy, you plant one tree, so that's pretty cool. Click the link in my description to see some of my favorite Displates as well as get my special discount code that It'll be applied automatically at checkout. It's a great deal and it's only available for a limited time, so definitely check it out. Thanks to Display for sponsoring this video. Now back to my stories. About a month or so ago, I made a few videos on my premium channel, Jarvis Johnson Gold, about two fictional influencers. The first was Butler Darren, a man who is purporting to be the personal assistant of a billionaire and gets into a lot of hijinks with his billionaire boss, like finding a girlfriend for his billionaire boss and then having an affair with said person. I fiddlesticked my boss's girlfriend. Or outing a fellow TikTok influencer as the daughter of a billionaire. Which brings me to the other fictional influencer that I talked about, Much Joy, who is uh, the daughter of said billionaire, fictional billionaire, fictional daughter. It's all fictional. Except for in the story, she's not actually the daughter of the billionaire. No, no, no. That's actually her identical twin, which is, you know, one of her storylines. Another one is how her grandmother stole her boyfriend. They really cover a lot of ground in these videos. If you're confused by any of this, we all are what is going on. These videos share a lot of, of elements that have sort of like defined a genre on TikTok. Most of these TikTokers in their bios say that they're fictional now. Some of them didn't used to. They have some of the worst acting that I have ever seen and some of the worst writing that I've ever seen. And it seems like that's on purpose. They all have comment sections that kind of play into the to the world like everybody seems to be in on it or they're being fooled because maybe these videos showed up in their for you page and they didn't you know go out of their way to find out that it's fictional nonetheless it's a very strange corner of tiktok that has only gotten stranger when i first talked about these videos i talked about how bad the acting was you know i kind of riffed on it i did my normal I did my normal thing. And some of the comments were like, Jarvis, you're such a boomer. Have you never seen an ARG before, an alternate reality game? To that I say, hey, that's not nice. <laughs> but also, yes, I, uh, you know, like I am familiar with fake influencers. I, I am, I am old enough to remember Lonely Girl 15 and also various alternate reality games. Do anybody remember Lost? The TV show, that had an alternate reality game that I played. Those are games. This, as far as I understand, isn't a game. It's a lifestyle, baby. And yeah, sorry, I'm gonna make fun of a bad story if it's a bad story. That's, it's fun for all of us to experience, I think. And it doesn't take away from whether or not someone 
can enjoy the thing. Shortly after I made these two videos on my second channel, I got an email from an actress telling me that there is a production company that's behind a lot of these stories. And she had read and seen a bunch of character breakdowns that you would get if you were like uh, auditioning to play a role in, in one of these things. And we were setting a time to, to talk about this and discuss it. And I was probably gonna make a video about that, but life got in the way. And also my puppy got in the way. I've been a little busy with him the past month or so, but he's a very good boy. Anyway, I woke up the other day to a bunch of people tagging me about a Vox article that had just come out about fictional influencers and about the production company that is responsible for nearly all of the main ones on TikTok, at least that I'm aware of. You should all check it out. It's by Rebecca Jennings. I've actually met her. She's awesome. Her pieces are awesome. You should read them. The article reveals that there's a production company called Forefront that has 22 stories fake influencers, and they're trying to build like the Marvel Cinematic Universe of uh, fake people and fake stories. Um, so like, I guess the Marvel Cinematic Universe actually, but except for they're like pretending to be real. Apparently this company was founded by this uh, USC screenwriter guy. They're taking the like TV pilot approach where some of the stories succeed, some of them fail with the hopes of like building this, this larger thing. The weird thing about this though, is that it's not clear if everyone is on the same page about whether or not this stuff is real. For example, there is one of their characters named Sydney who had been on my radar since I made those other videos, who in her story in like the fictional world that she lives in, that's why it's so hard. It's hard, so hard to fucking talk about because I have to keep couching this in like, it's fictional, it's fictional. This character, Sydney, works for a dating app. She posts this TikTok that goes viral where she says, I work for a dating app and here's four things that you need to like look out for. I imagine a lot of people would watch that and go, oh, this is real, this is real dating advice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that in mind. I'm gonna take that to heart. Maybe I'm not gonna go to her profile and read that it's fictional because I'm just scrolling through my For You page. And so this got written up in a random like internet, you know how websites are like, this influencer said this thing. Well, someone did that and they were like, this girl who works at a dating app says these four things are like red flags you should look out for. And then that got picked up by the New York Post and nowhere do they, do either of those places say that it's, it's fictional. And this is all covered in the Vox piece. New York Post isn't the most reputable uh, news source, but a lot of people are gonna read this and just assume that it's coming from a real influencer. And maybe it's completely harmless in this scenario, but, I don't know, it just feels dishonest and like this weird ethical gray area. Cause like if I saw an article called Tony Stark's Four Rules for Success, I know that Tony Stark isn't real, isn't a real person. I think Tony Stark isn't a real person. Is I actually haven't seen Sydney's TikToks, even though people have sent me your stuff a bunch, so I'm gonna look at those now. Uh, and I want us to all keep in mind the knowledge that a team of writers is coming up with this character. Let's look to see where they're transparent about this. Sydney here, Sydney Plus, this is her account. She has said that she works at a dating app company, then became a New York Post story. The hashtags here, for you, for you page, dating, dating apps, no hashtag fictional here. Now, if you go to Sydney's profile, they always like throw fictional in, in a place where you're not even like looking, right? 50% spicy, 50% sweet, 100% fictional. Oh, okay. So you're literally fictional. That's not just like a me, that's not like a joke. It's just a very like tongue in cheek way of saying you're fictional where you've technically done it. You've technically disclosed that the account's fictional, but I mean, this is a, uh, this TikTok ha clearly had a lot of influence and it's not one that was disclosed that it was fictional. So I just think that the lines are more blurred than they make them out to be. Now the TikTok itself is fine. It's got the writing of like a CW show. Says my mom is my world. He'll either ghost you or propose in a month. No in between. It's kind of a great example of how people can just say whatever they want on TikTok and they're not really qualified, even though they, a lot of times they say they are. 
I wear customer support for a dating app that shall not be named. I'm gonna start a series of the craziest or cutest encounters I've seen. Are you serious? Why are you on this app? Oh, uh, why are you? I was checking to see if you were. Yeah, okay. I knew it. I should have listened to my friends. Okay, get a hotel tonight, asshole. I want a divorce. <laughs> So this is like a married couple that found themselves on found each other on the dating app, but they're both on the dating app. I'm sorry. What? I'm checking to see if you were a likely story. I mean, it's, this one's hashtag fictional, and I don't know if that's with regard to the the message here, uh, the fact that this girl is not a real person named Sydney, or both. I'm gonna assume both though. You're allowed to read private conversations? She did kind of make it seem like this was something that she saw in her line of work and not something that she made up or something someone sent her, but it is Tinder. So she wouldn't have done a very good job at not naming the app if it, she just showed a Tinder screenshot afterward. So Sydney's whole deal is that she works at some unnamed dating app that doesn't exist because it's fictional. Oh wait, because it which side am I supposed to? Are you supposed to be able to see my mouth when you do this? But yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're blocking out these people over here. It's fi it's all fake. And in between TikToks about dating app advice from someone who works at a dating app and other like self-help TikToks, there is a insane storyline unfolding. And I'm going to try to explain it to the best that I understand it. Buckle in. Are you the sibling who solely exists to make the rest look good, or are you normal? Guess what I am. My job, customer support. Yay, minimum wage. My sister's job, literally saving the lives of infants on a daily basis. She's a NICU nurse, where I live, on my sister's couch. Where my sister lives, at a condo near the beach that she owns. My biggest character flaw, not going to college. My sister's biggest character flaw, she got a cavity once, at age 12. And the dentist said it wasn't even her fault, we just have bad genes. So let me know. Okay, so this pretty much gives you the lowdown on her character as a whole. She lives in her sister's shadow. She works for minimum wage at a dating app and she lives on her sister's couch. So that is where we start. That is the that is the baseline. This TikTok was posted in June. So this has been unfolding for a while. That brings us to our first plot twist. And it's that she, through her hookups at the dating app that doesn't exist, finds out that her... Uh, sister's fiance is cheating on her. I work customer support for a dating app, so I'm always getting insane emails. Today, an account got flagged for unusually high activity rates, which usually means it's a bot, but I did some digging, and this account is actually associated with a phone number. This guy is real and so thirsty, he's swiping on every profile he sees. First of all, can you imagine a world where this person is sharing private details from their job for TikTok clout? I think that some people do believe that. So one of the comments is like, is this a skit? You'd be fired the second this TikTok goes up, but it is fake. So this one is not hashtag fictional. I just want to keep pointing that out. I feel like these TikToks, people started to call them out and then they're like, oh, we need to be more forthcoming with like the fictional nature of this. But they benefited from not doing that for a very long time. The funniest part of all of this is that this guy has the same name as my sister's asshole fiance who just tried to kick me out of her apartment. Warning to all the girlies, men named Isaiah are the devil. Actually, I'm looking at this again, and this phone number looks kind of... It's the same Isaiah, and she just happened to be filming when she realized the truth. <laughs> so that is the beginning of, of the twists and turns on this roller coaster. You will not believe the percentage of people on dating apps who are currently in relationships. The number is actually way higher than you would think. Hey. Uh, what's up? So in this video, uh, Sydney is filming a, I guess, unrelated or related TikTok about cheaters on dating apps and uh, her sister barges in and they have an intimate conversation about the cheating fiance. So she just kept filming because that's what you do. Content, baby. Break up with him, but it's like, that's just really hard. I know. Really? I feel like this is a private conversation and shouldn't be posted. Oh, you dumb, dumb idiot commenter. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's a... Uh... That's the thing. That's what we're talking about here. Maybe this person is just is just playing into the world. <laughs> I don't think so. But this one is hashtag fiction, so thank God. It's sandwiched in between these other hashtags, so hopefully you don't see it. Yeah. Hey. 
it's so funny to me that even in this fictional soap opera world of Sydney's TikToks, she wouldn't just finish this conversation and go, damn, I'm still recording. Well, better post it. People want what they want. I don't, I don't care about my sister, fuck her. So then, and this is an insane soap opera, the sister chooses the fiance, doesn't, doesn't, even though her fiance's cheating, she's like, I'm not gonna end it. And she kicks Sydney out. And so Sydney has to find a new roommate. Who is she gonna find? Who's gonna be the roommate? Is it gonna be somebody from Facebook maybe? Or somebody from Craigslist? That could be scary. You don't really know things about those people. Maybe you should find somebody like in your, in your orbit who you know, like the mistress of your sister's fiance. Yes, the girl who your sister's fiance is allegedly cheating with. That's who will be your roommate because that way you don't have any randos in the home. And so that's nice, that's good, that's better. Officially can't afford to pay my rent. And we all know what that means. I got a new roommate! And with my sister's fiance is a mistress. Can call me a mistress on the internet without giving some context. Okay, but if they want context, they can watch our other videos. New roommate check. Meet my sister's fiance's mistress. I love the idea that this person you just met would be so cool with being called a mistress. <laughs> Give some like she's like, come on, don't call me a mistress. Like at least without explaining. My ex isn't giving me an allowance anymore, so I can't really afford my own place. Yeah, and we all know I can't afford this place. Wait, I'm in love with this new friendship. Me too, me too, this is great. You can always find friends in the most unlikely of places, so keep your eyes peeled. If your sister is uh, getting cheated on with somebody, Befriend them. New friend opportunity unlocked. Now's the time. Seize it. You never know. Maybe that's your maid of honor. That's your, you know? It'll never get complicated, I promise. Also, wait. She said her ex won't give her an allowance anymore. So her ex, not her... God, I need like a family tree. or I need like a diagram. When she says her ex, she's talking about someone else we don't know. But then she's linked as well here. Oh, and she's got her own... Storyline, ugh. Ah, this is exhausting, dude. I can't watch all these TikToks. Undisputed hottie, fictional sugar baby. Okay, so she's a sugar baby. That's why she was getting an allowance from her ex. I don't have time to watch her <laughs> hers right now. I might, look, if people are really into this, there are 22 of these accounts and I am but one man. But if you are, if you're interested, I might make more videos on the Gold Channel just cause I started doing individual story breakdowns of, the, of these these absurd um, fictional characters. So maybe that's the next wave. Maybe that's the new Jarvis gets to the bottom of animated, fake animated stories is Jarvis gets to the bottom of fictional influencers. Cause it's fun. It's not as dark sometimes as some of the other stuff. Sometimes. Some of you know there's a wedding I am trying to stop. My sister's fiance has zero respect for their relationship and has been talking to other girls. Including me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Including me. She's just there like you're in a freaking haunted house. <laughs> and she's like, I'm here. Hmm, I'm a mistress. Hello. So one of their big things in how they do the world building is that they have a lot of lives. I haven't bothered watching any of the lives, but apparently some stuff goes down. And that I'll actually, I'll actually talk about lives again in a minute. I think the interesting thing about this is how flippant again she is about the the relationship and one of the top comments here is somehow i don't believe any of this and i just don't you know i wonder why i wonder why they don't believe any of this it's so believable including me <laughs> this is a great comment that kind of explains everything this is viral and her sister still hasn't seen this scripted but I guess I'm invested. Because I don't have all the time in the world to go to go deep on all these, she gets suspended from her uh, fictional dating app job that is fake. And like her, she's also fictional. Just need to disclose this. I disclose that they're fictional more often than these fucking accounts do, if I'm being honest. But then we start to get into the, like, mar the, the MCU crossover, like, arc of this whole thing. I went to show my sister the footage of her fiance cheating on her with my roommate. This girl is the happiest I have ever seen someone talking about a family being destroyed <laughs> or like a, uh, a relationship like going up in flames. I was on my way to show my sister the footage of the love of her life uh, destroying the trust in their relationship. On top of that, he reported me to my job, he sent an anonymous tip in that I'm breaching protocol, and so now I'm on suspension from work with no pay. Even in this fictional world, 
you should have just been fired immediately. It's not his fault for reporting you to your job. Fictionally in this universe, I have to continue clarifying. Like I'm a little bit like, what did you expect? Wow, how dare he? Now that she's been suspended from her job without pay for publicly revealing information about one of the job's customers, fictionally, she's like, I have no money, so my only option is to compete to win the billion dollar estate of butler darren's boss it's all connected butler darren's here now it's all coming full circle back in butler darren land where we last left him he was like cheating on his boss's girlfriend or something and they broke up but then somehow he his relationship with his boss is salvaged. I don't know. Maybe he never found out about it. So his boss is giving away his... I We'll just watch a Butler Darren. I needed to watch a Butler Darren video to understand what's going on here. But for those who aren't familiar with Butler Darren, he is, uh, like I was saying earlier, a fictional billionaire's assistant. And that's kind of all you need to know. This is your chance to become a billionaire. My boss, Mr. Bucks, is single. <laughs> so when I last watched Butler Darren, his boss was unnamed. His boss's name is Mr. Butts. <laughs> this is great. Okay, okay. So his boss, Mr. Butts, has no true heir, I guess. Now I'm recruiting contestants for the billion heir competition. How do you enter? Easy. My boss made a Discord where you can talk to a bot. <laughs> <laughs> the line, my boss made a Discord so you, where you can talk to a bot. Like that's not, that's not very impressive. <laughs> All you have to do is convince this bot you deserve the money. What's funny is that everyone and anyone can enter, but who are the people who make it to the next round of the competition? Might, you might see a familiar face. But I'm ready to move on to the next level of men dating me for my money. Me for my money. <laughs> Sorry, I love, she's my favorite character, dude. I'll be spending my next five days wooing a robot. Be spending the next five days wooing a robot. This is the real Turing test. That's a joke for my nerds. Your boss must be pretty lonely if he doesn't have an heir. It's both. It's both of them. It's the. It's it's freaking Sydney and Carmen, the roommates. They just happened to impress the bot. All of us applied, and those two were the most qualified. That's crazy. What a crazy coincidence. Watch me tell this group of TikTokers how they can win a billion dollars in the next 24 hours. In case you don't know, literally all of these people are TikTok fictional accounts created by Forefront, the company. Oh, it's Trixie. It's the evil twin from the uh, Much Joy videos. I actually, I do kind of like the, I got a little bit excited seeing all the familiar faces. I don't even know half these people, but I don't fully know if the billionaire thing has, has resolved itself yet this close to applying to a sketchy Craigslist job listing, requesting sexy fit young people to assist in a film shoot. Okay, so I don't know what happened. I didn't, I must have missed the live. I'm desperate because I really cannot keep working for a billionaire who wouldn't even consider me to be the heir to his fortune after I've done everything he asked. I'm tired of lying to myself and giving more to this job then I'm getting back. This is, I have no idea what happened to the live, but this is, <laughs> this is a roller coaster. I don't know what's going on here anymore. I'm a little confused, but this is a very strange thing. It's entertaining. It's certainly weird. I'm glad at least now they're hashtagging everything fictional, but it's easy to see why there are a lot of people who don't realize that it is. Because of the way TikTok works, you can't expect anyone who comes across one of your videos through their algorithm to know the genre of like fake soap opera influencer TikTok, you know? So I definitely think that like they're hooking people in who think it's real at first and then maybe some people are sticking around who are still intrigued after realizing it's fake. You hope, you hope. But that's kind of all I have to say on this for now. Um, let me know if you want to see me delve more deeply into this stuff on the second channel. I'm kind of curious just because the stories are so stupid. <laughs> and definitely check out the videos that I've done on Butler Darren and Much Joy if you have not seen those because apparently it's relevant. <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs>